part two here is just to reiterate something about the 14th Amendment. Uh, 14th Amendment is passed in the eight, in 1868, amended to the Constitution, part of it talking about equal protection, due process, citizenship. And what happens is that the Supreme Court, case by case, over the course of the 20th century, uh, the middle of the 20th century, 1930s, I believe, up to the 1960s, and well, it's still going on, uh, decides that certain phrases, clauses in the Bill of Rights apply to the states too. Okay, so desegregation uh, of schools, freedom of speech, things like that. There was actually just recently a case in Washington, D.C., in the Supreme Court that applied the no excessive fines clause. So your your textbook is actually just a touch out of date on that. It's not their fault. Uh, but there's a guy who had um, gotten caught selling drugs. He had bought a, a Range Rover SUV with money from an insurance settlement. He was driving in his car, uh, got arrested with drugs, and the um, government of Indiana took his Range Rover, the civil asset forfeiture, that's called. Okay. Uh, got to the Supreme Court and they ruled that that was excessive. Okay. That basically a you know forty two thousand dollar fine, which was what his his uh, Range Rover was worth, I believe, was excessive for the penalty. Right. So that had never been applied to the states before, but now it is applied there. Okay. And so states can't do excessive fines. I'm sure there'll be litigation to figure out what exactly all excessive means and everything. Okay. But the whole idea here is that if you, you know, think of it as a process, the bill of rights through the Avenue of the 14th amendment is applied to the States. It had not applied to the States and local governments before. Uh, but now the rights in the bill of rights, almost all of them do. Okay. On a case by case basis, from the uh, 1930s or so uh, up into even the present day, all right? And that's kind of the big picture of civil liberties, how uh, they get applied to us um, at the state local levels, okay? Now, um, real quick to wrap up, difference between civil liberties and civil rights. Civil liberties are individual. They are things that the government cannot do to you, okay? Um, generally speaking, civil rights are generally group based. Okay. You think about civil rights for most famously, uh, black people for African Americans, in the United States also think about, uh, different other groups that have claimed civil rights, um, you know, uh, and, and based on their, their identity group or their, you know, the marginalized status of that group, um, women, um, Hispanic people, uh, the uh, uh, LGBTQ people, right, uh, community. So it's, uh, those are civil rights. We'll talk more about big trends there on Wednesday, okay? But that's the difference between the two. Civil liberties tend to be individual and how government has to leave you alone. Um, civil rights are tend to be group-based. And uh, the argument is, in each case, that the, the group in question is not fully included in society and therefore needs to be brought into society, uh, full inclusion. So uh, that's the argument behind, say, same-sex marriage, right? Uh, behind um, women's rights to vote in the 1920 amendment, right? So these are some major big trends that we'll see. And I'll, and I'll talk about individual issues more on Wednesday, but I hope this helps you to get you some idea of kind of the big picture patterns in federalism and civil rights. Again, please ask me questions if you need help, okay?